In this video, we're going to take a quick look at NALID and some of its metabolites, their potential dangers, and what you might do to remedy that danger. This is an organophosphate that inhibits colon esterase. I've included a figure which kind of gives you an overview of that activity. Think of acetylcholine as like an accelerator in your car, and the colon esterase as the brake. And when the brakes don't work, that could be quite dangerous perhaps even fatal. Dichlorvose is a metabolite of nalid that lacks two bromine molecules. It is also an organophosphate and a cholinesterase inhibitor. One potential danger, at least in guinea pigs, is that exposure to dichlorvose during brain development results in brain hypoplasia for the offspring. In addition to forming adducts with DNA and possibly impairing replication and repair, dichlorvose can also bind to proteins like transferrin and albumin. Some of the proteins affected by dichlorvose exposure in a hepatocyte cell line include the insulin-like growth factor 1 receptor pathway, AKT, also known as protein kinase B, which is an anti-apoptotic protein, as well as those involved in cholesterol transport, spindle assembly, and chromosomal separation. Dichlorvose exposure in rats was associated with testicular toxicity, decreased sperm motility, and decreased testosterone concentrations in control animals, and those also treated with vitamin C and E. Diazinon, a different type of organophosphate insecticide, was associated with microcephaly in the South American toad. That would be figure F on the screen. In this part, we're going to look at some chemicals that may remedy or mitigate the risk to being exposed to nalid or dichlorvos. The first chemical we'll talk about is scrosin, which is a constituent of saffron that mitigated dichlorvose damage in a colon cancer cell line. Quercetin, a flavonoid, had a protective effect against the damage of dichlorvose in rats. Extracts of celery were also protective against the damaging effects of dichlorvose in rats by maintaining the activities of superoxide dismutase, glutathione S transferase, as well as catalase. In nigrostriatal cells, dichlorvose increased mitochondrial dysfunction as well as alpha-synuclein aggregation and decreased dopamine and resulted in neurodegeneration. This was somewhat mitigated by pretreatment with coenzyme Q before exposure to dichlorvose. In this section, we're going to look at some risks that have maybe been overlooked, such as what happens if we assume that nalid breaks down completely and is non-toxic. Well, we still have two bromines we have to account for. Are they incorporated into plants? Do they accumulate into water? Do they biomagnify in certain animals like fish? And if they do, is there a risk to thyroid function in animals that would then consume these plants or those animals? Mm -hmm. Another risk that may have been overlooked is the impact of nalid or dichlorvos on non-target species, such as dragonflies or mosquito fish that help to control the mosquito population. Here are the references, and thanks again for watching.